all it does is bring Singapore up to where you know many other developed countries were perhaps 10 20 or even 30 years ago so it's a very delayed reaction to the, the times uh, but still um, it's better that we have this forward move than to stand still is it formalizing what really had been happening in practice in a way, yes, because um, back in 2007, 15 years ago, when the issue was debated in Parliament, the government took, um, made a stand that, uh, all right, um, we will not be enforcing the law, the 377A law. And uh, so I think it's true that uh, in the years since, they have not been proactively enforcing it. And uh, a repeal simply formalizes, as you said, uh, what the position has been for the last 15 years. Nevertheless, they are stopping short, though, of allowing same-sex unions. Do you feel there is still a lot of work to be done? It is, in fact, regrettable that at the same time that they are indicating they are prepared to move with the times, they are putting barriers ahead of us for the next lap, so to speak. And it is particularly egregious when the Prime Minister himself said that the government has received advice that in the coming years, there may be a challenge to the constitutional position of permitting marriage only to heterosexual couples. And these challenges in the courts may well succeed. So the government has been informed that the, there is an inher inherent inequality in the present marriage legislation that can be overturned by the courts in future. So they know that this is in inherently unequal. And yet, they want to put it into a constitutional amendment and essentially cement this inequality. I think this is very, very shocking. Mm. So why do you think, Alex, they've done that? Why? Huh. You know, this government seems not to have a, a value system to guide itself by. Instead, it is all at sea, trying to triangulate and uh, navigate between the different opinions, whether those opinions are rightful or wrongful. And unless a government has a clear pole star to guide itself by, this is how it ends up trying to do things to please people, but in fact, do things that only embarrass themselves. Uh, so I think it, it's important on this question, in fact, to leave it to the courts, because they, of all people, are the ones who will go by the question of right and wrong. Mm. How has the broader community responded? Uh, is there a relief, or is there still the sense that there's a bigger fight ahead? Oh, I'm sure everybody realises that this is only the first step in a very, very long road. It's taken us like 30 years uh, to get from the first gay organisation uh, speaking out on this matter to this point. Uh, you know, ahead, it's not just marriage or, or same-sex unions. There is such a thing, uh, such a missing thing as non-discrimination legislation. We have to deal with censorship. We have to deal with sexuality education in the schools. So there's a hell of a lot more to be done. And I think at this point, maybe I should add that credit should be given to the tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of Singaporeans and others who through these years have come out to their families and friends and shifted their families and friends' views on this matter. So it's important that this is a collective victory for all. Yeah. And it must give you some relief as such a long-time activist and campaigner in this area. Indeed it is. Um, but it's very sobering to see the long road ahead and even more so to see the Prime Minister putting up new barriers when it's quite uncalled for and plainly wrong. Yeah. Do you feel that despite these changes, there's still a lot of discrimination within Singaporean society? 
I don't know whether one can say it's a lot or little because it's it is experienced differently by different people depending on their circumstances. Um, I do know that there are a lot of openly gay people who live relatively free lives, but then on the other hand, there are people who will still live closeted lives and still fear that um, there's a lot against going against them. And I think those fears are real, those experiences are real. So, and that's why it's important not just to say, okay, um, you know, the, the job's done. No, it is not done. There's a whole lot more to be done to make sure that every last gay person feels safe and free. Yeah, let's hope we see that continue. Good to have you on. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.